वेलकम टू सेंटिनल वन प्रेजेंट्स ई टी स्टूडियोज रीडिफाइनिंग साइबर सिक्योरिटी इन एसोसिएशन विद ई टी सी सो टूडे वी आर स्पॉट लाइटिंग क्लाउड सिक्योरिटी एंड टू डेल्व इन टू द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटीज वी हैव अ फैंटेस्टिक पैनल लाइन अप फॉर यू प्लीज वेलकम प्रदीप्ता पात्रो हेड ऑफ साइबर सिक्योरिटी एंड आई टी प्लेटफॉर्म एट के सी इंटरनेशनल मकेश चंद्र मोहन सी सो एट आदित्य बिरला कैपिटल and the vakar dayal md and country head india sentinel one hello and welcome thank you so much for thank taking you. our time and joining us today and let me start off with my first question that's cloud adoption and security responsibility with india's rapid cloud adoption how do you see the shared responsibility model evolving between organizations and cloud service providers csps when it comes to securing data and applications pradipta if you could start off Yeah, great. Uh, I think today's world, uh, the way the digitizations are happening, the transformations are happening across the cloud is like you know the way forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we are looking into more or less like uh, the adoption, the way the cloud is happening, and the way uh, pre-pandemic area and today is that uh, like you know post-pandemic area, it is complete changes the paradigm. Mm -hmm. And every enterprise is today. If you see that enterprises like uh, medium to high or by by the way conglomerates and all they we really adopt the cloud. extensively and this is where it's a like practical scenario is once you move into the cloud it is not always like you know the way you have secured uh, your information or data the way it is been uh, defined as like you know on prem and might be like you know private cloud yeah. today it is gone to the private and public cloud and the hybrid cloud model or multi cloud side mm -hmm. of it people and it is more all of the strategy of the organizations mm -hmm. how it is been moved on that perspective if you look into that uh, of course cyber security again is a high risk part of it mm -hmm. if today if you look into that not only for the cloud perspective but overall perspective if you see that world economic forum as well like you know uh, out of like you know 1 to 10 mm -hmm. if you rank them it is fifth the position in the cloud like you know cyber security is one of that high risk from the global perspective mm -hmm. on that perspective of course the cloud security to be taken up mm -hmm. seriously and those like you know the most of the breaches or the data breaches or incidents are happening on the cloud Right. so we need to have more focus on the cloud security how to protect the organization data as well as that protecting the organization value so that is what uh, all the cisos and uh, like you know to working yeah. towards that you know of course cisos a lot of responsibility falls on you but when it comes to the cloud responsibility how do you view it makesh so uh, shilpa thanks for the opportunity um so cloud adoption is not new right for me it's like cloud adoption is a journey which we initiated some a decade back uh, but definitely as pradeep thro uh, mentioned the uh, uh, post covid scenario has fostered this growth uh, in an exponential fashion uh, because need of an infrastructure uh, the reason for actually the business life cycle dependency on digital ecosystem uh dependence on uh, the continuous service uh, uh, availability for the customers uh, etc etc right so shared model or shared responsibility model which we call it as as part of csps as well as an organizations uh, who are consuming the cloud assets uh, have evolved over the period of time definitely it has improved if you ask me i think the responsibility has gained the momentum in terms of the maturity how organization needs to look at it how csps has to look at it what kind of services you are actually taking from the cloud be is platform as a service or uh, the information as a service or a software as a service uh, for every aspect of it i think the shared responsibility model uh, goes hand in hand but it is different for each item right mm -hmm. i think that awareness is available but nevertheless i think the csps uh, roles and responsibilities which they have to take it uh, has to improve a lot like for example in a recent past i think some of the regulations which has come for regulated industries in the country today has definitely mandated and elevated the responsibilities of the csps mm -hmm. uh, where uh, definitely uh, there is a need for a improved responsibility to be taken by the csps improved responsibility to taken by Uh, the data fiduciary who is responsible for maintaining the data security of the uh, uh, customers and um, so this this is an ever evolving uh, aspect uh, and i'm pretty sure i think we are moving in the right direction and uh, uh, hopefully in next few years we will see a much matured way of actually handling the cloud especially on the public cloud uh, scenario when you just uh, mentioned evolving laws right so with dpdp coming into effect diva how do you, how are you seeing the trend of cloud adoption and security evolving 
Yeah, I think uh, the journey to cloud is here and now, and uh, it's, it started almost a decade back, like what Makesh correctly said, and it's not going to stop. Right. Or we will have to evolve in terms of uh, the the expectations from regulatory standpoint and DPDP is just one example of that. And then there are also expectations from really the threat actors and vectors out there really getting faster and uh, you know sharper. And hence, I think the shared responsibility model really uh, you know to me, I think there's some more time for it to kind of evolve, where it almost becomes a shared fate, mm -hmm. because clearly. Uh, well, there are some mature customers in, in, you know, who have adopted cloud and also understand the limitations of cloud security. There are not so mature organizations. Mm -hmm. And hence, what happens is that when they go onto cloud, they have this false uh, you know, understanding of, hey, all of my security would be taken care of, right? Because what they look at, and in a real world example, is they look at a parking lot with the best of concrete you know, structures, right? the best of CCTV cameras and security guards guarding my car. But inside the car, if I have three passengers of, in which one of them has gone rogue and he's got, say, God forbid, a gun, whose responsibility is it? Right? And hence, I think that evolution is still happening as we speak. And I always, always wonder, right, uh, if there was an incident if the data was to kind of you know get stolen, there's to be a backdoor in any organization's you know business applications within the cloud. Who do you think they would call for an incident response? Hmm. A cloud security service provider, <laughs> or a real-world cyber security incident response provider? I think that should tell you the, the direction at which I think uh, most organizations look at in this uh, you know space. Absolutely. Well answered, you and great example as always. Now let's talk about security considerations for multi-cloud environments. Many organizations now are embracing multi-cloud strategies. What security challenges are there in these environments and how can they be effectively addressed? Yeah, in fact, uh, today's every enterprise is to be adopting the multiple of uh, multiple uh, cloud adoption, whether private, private or public cloud. On that perspective, if you look into that, uh, it is a moral of the strategy for the BCP perspective, or might be like you know not locking with one partner or, or any 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 uh, provider. So that is one uh, part of it. And uh, those that uh, adopting the multi-cloud strategy, on that perspective, uh, to managing those multiple clouds, we need a lot of like you know technology again to enable those. Even though those technologies are not only like you know coming al al along with that on uh, the native side of it, we have to enforce those technology as well as managing those in the central. Uh, place that is where the challenges comes like you know then second is of course like you know the skills where uh, how we can improve uh, like you know those skill uh, resources to managing the multi cloud uh, that is again another challenges and third is of course like you know though our workloads are distributed across the multiple cloud so is that not that the single solutions might be like you know single kind of uh, tools or the technologies can support that all the hybrid clouds or the certain certain places we have observed that that marketplace mm -hmm. certain like you know security tools may not be available on the other marketplace mm -hmm. so that is again the challenges there are a few challenges of course but uh, has to go through that of course yeah so when it comes to this multi cloud model what what do you think the forecast is makesh see shilpa i think uh, uh, there are multiple challenges while we talk about multi cloud uh, environment right so one of the largest challenge which i foresee as part of my cso profile is about getting a visibility of what assets are there in different uh, cloud, right? So when I talk about uh, a traditional DC infrastructure, I know that this is my data, data center and this is my perimeter and I have my list of assets, inventory is maintained and I know what I need to protect, what I need to do for each and every asset. When it comes to cloud also, I was having that visibility. But the moment, once you talk about multi-cloud environment, you have different cloud service providers, you have different accounts, you have different subscriptions, you have freedom from technology perspective to move ahead and create your own subscription, right? So slowly what happened is like uh, the, the perimeter which you had and the assumption which you had that you had enormous amount of control on the perimeter vanishes overnight, right? Suddenly you realize that it has become boundaryless architecture, people are having multi-cloud environment, people are actually having multiple subscriptions and accounts which may or may not be visible to you. So henceforth, you may not have a control on that. So the biggest challenge is actually to get complete visibility about your organization's complete cloud assets, which are spreaded to multiple cloud service providers. 
Second is like have a clear tower of control where you want to actually establish a landing page for each and every cloud so that under that landing page only all those assets will get created be it it is a different subscription or a different accounts. That's the second uh, point. The third point is about looking at a tool and technology which can give a single 360 degree view of all the assets in a single page rather than going for multiple tools and technologies. That's the third one. Fourth one is about, uh, of course, I think uh, when you talk about nativity of each and every cloud service provider, they use different terms and technologies. They use different references. They have different platforms. The need for the skilled resources to manage and maintain the security posture of different cloud is increasingly becoming a challenge, right? Uh, so these are the three, four challenges which I can think about. Nevertheless, I think we have a lot. I think we are evolving. But these three, four are really, really, really important. Uh, if you want to make a successful journey in the public cloud adoption. That's very well summarized indeed. His mind is experienced to put that in perspective for us. Diva, I would love to hear your insights on this. Yeah, I think they've kind of, uh, you know, covered it very well, right? The only part I'd add is uh, to this complexity and, uh, you know, this kind of siloed, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, silos that's been created simply because no organization mostly will go for one single cloud, right? Once you've kind of broken your on-prem and hybrid, you would want to try multiple clouds flexibility. And hence, the ability to really apply one single uh, policy or pane of glass view across these multifaceted, multi-vector assets of yours from you know, laptops to workstations to servers to cubes and cloud in a single you know, unified manner is a challenge. And I think that is where uh, the, the reliance of cloud security providers to really provide those tools, mm -hmm. even if they were great, is limited because organizations would want to have one single uh, you know, uh, platform, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that platform today is a real more uh, real-time driven, which is obviously using an AI-powered intelligence mm -hmm. that kind of understands the threat uh, uh, you know, in real time, not just across a particular asset, like say a, a cube or a cloud container, but also across their entire gamut of enterprise landscape. And that primarily is able to not just understand what's happening, but also be able to provide them a correlated ability to really detect prevent, right, if possible, uh, respond and remediate in a manner that is uh, machine speed. Of course, that's the challenge they're really, uh, you know, facing today. And yeah, they're in agreement with you, absolutely. Now, do you think native security solutions offered by cloud providers are sufficient for setting up a scalable security process for you? Uh, to be honest, uh, most of the cases, what we have seen that uh, the private or public cloud, the native security is not enough. Mm -hmm. So we need to have uh, getting those uh, security from like, you know, from the market space or might be from different OEMs mm -hmm. to enable that or improving the posture of the security. If you talk about the landing zone, of course, the minimum security or VPC or mm -hmm. might be talking about certain WAF services or load balancer and all that, it is understand. Mm -hmm. But that is not enough always. Like, you know, we need to enable those, let's say talk about identity access management per se, or talk about privilege access management per se, or might be a lot of other technologies as well to protecting those data, accessing those is paramount always. Mm -hmm. So we should have the customers would have, or might be that enterprise would have consider for not only rely on the native list, but should have overlapping on those and more of like, you know, complementing those other cybersecurity tools that to be implemented to enhance the posture of the cybersecurity in the cloud. Yes. Is, that, is that what you feel as well, that native security is not proactive enough? I, I, I have seen the complete uh, uh, journey of cloud, how it has evolved. Uh, definitely there is an, uh, a leap and bounds um, improvements which I have seen. Mm -hmm. But as I told in the, my previous uh, conversation, uh, uh, it becomes all the more important to have an, um, a CSP neutral solution which can actually cut across the spectrum because I can't go with a native tool and I can't work with the different uh, look-alike tools and technologies uh, for different uh, CSPs, right? So I need a solution, I need a platform which can independently work uh, at a different layer uh, above CSP where it can cut across the different CSPs. That's point number one. Point number two, um, as, as Diva mentioned, it is very, very important to have uh, uh, AI enabled solution, which gives that age for us to actually uh, make that quick detection and response because these are all very, very time sensitive 
uh, events which occurs and if it is not handled on the time uh, it doesn't make any sense to have a solution and do a postmortem at the later stage of uh, the uh, scenario i think it is not sufficient as he, as he mentioned but it has grown a lot but if you have an uh, if you have a, a necessary budgets and if you have a wish that you want to spread across multiple csps then it's all the more important to have uh, a csp neutral uh, platform which helps us and what have you noticed diva are people happy with native security or do they want something more I mean, it's a loaded question. <laughs> you won't get a biased answer from of me. Of course. Given I represent, a, you know, a purpose-built, a purpose-driven cybersecurity platform, uh, I would answer it differently because, uh, as a student of cybersecurity for almost now uh, close to three decades, uh, would I trust an operating system to provide me cybersecurity? The answer, I think, is no. Would I trust a networking company to provide me cybersecurity? <laughs> mm, I'm not so sure. Uh, would I trust somebody who makes uh, something really good in terms of building the infrastructure, but would I trust them to deliver my cybersecurity? I think that's the answer. The reality is that you need somebody to wake up every day, uh, really think about how the threat actors are going to you know, invade, right? Uh, really demolish your castle, right? And be in a, in a specific workload, be it in a specific you know, a server, be it in your network. Unless you have that kind of passion and DNA in an organization to create a good, robust cybersecurity you know, defense capabilities, I think it would be expecting too much of uh, providers to really you know, have the same amount of uh, you know, energy to provide. Uh, More specialization. Exactly. All right, now so we have CISOs. Sure. I had a point here yes, sure. uh, uh, as uh, Diva was talking about a very interesting conversation which uh, uh, every time we encounter as a CISO is like people come back and say that, you know, like, you know, you know, what is the trust of this platform? You know, like uh, it handles more than 10 billion transactions per day. You know, like somebody calls and says that I'm, I'm actually managing to see 10 billion emails across the globe in my environment. So I have a highest potential to actually identify a phishing email or a spam email. Partially it might be true, but then uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, what, what is missing in that journey is like about the understanding of security. So the attitude which you carry towards the security is something which has to come as part of actually uh, cyber uh, offense, right? The who doesn't have a mindset of offense cannot create a solution for a defense, right? You should know what could go wrong in that to fix that. If you don't know what could go wrong, obviously you will not be able to fix it up. I think uh, most of the solution which Diva was talking about, which has definitely an edge on that particular area of expertise, they were not able to make that success just because of this attitude which is missing, mm -hmm. because they don't know the nuances of this offense, how it could happen, right? So you require a specialized expertise to look at it from the uh, offense background to make a successful solution around it. All right. And, That's and very if, I, if I just add to what he said, I just got this, uh, you know, uh, simple example, which is just because you sit in the library the whole day for 20 years of your life mm. doesn't make you the smartest human being. Absolutely. There may be tons of books, but yeah. you have to have that attitude to really go for an offensive look at and what's happening. And the methodology. Happening. Yeah, unfortunately today, I think because of some very smart marketeers out there, who obviously have paid tons of rupees, I'm sure, uh, you know, there is this message about I see more, hence I'm more intelligent. Uh, I think time has proven that it's not. Okay, I think that's a very hopeful note to wrap this discussion on. Thank you so much for combing through cloud security with me in such great detail. I had a great discussion, I had a great time and I hope it was valuable for you as well. And for more such deep dives, remember to keep tuning in to Redefining Cybersecurity. Thank you. <laughs>